There are so many different industries looking to pivot into cybersecurity. And one particular one that has quite a following is tractor trailer drivers moving into cybersecurity. So much in fact that in this video, we are gonna be talking with Aaron Katz, a professional truck driver who is currently working his butt off to pivot into cybersecurity. We're gonna be talking to him about why he's deciding to make that switch, what challenges he's encountered with labs, with studying, with networking while managing that tractor trailer driving career, what lessons learned he's picked up over the years that he can share with us, and a million other things that Aaron thinks is critically important for you to understand. So if you are a truck driver and you wanna pivot into cybersecurity, the next 15 to 20 minutes is absolutely going to be a game changer for you. Let's get into it. Hey, Aaron, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm, doing, great. I'm, I'm doing good. So, so Aaron, real quick, so we just level set. How long mm -hmm. have you been driving a tractor trailer? And it's it's an 18 wheeler, right? Like the full the full Monty, right? Yeah, it's the full 18 wheeler. I've been driving for about four or more four or five years at this point. Okay, so you've got time in the saddle, and you, you definitely understand that uh, tractor trailer lifestyle. So, mm -hmm. you know, the immediate question that. You know, people who may already know the answer if they're looking to find something different, but maybe there's tractor trailer drivers who are just kind of cyber curious and wanting to know. So Aaron, like right out the gate, why are you looking to make that switch from tractor trailer driver into cybersecurity specifically? So many of us, when we're driving, we uh, have 14 to 16 hour days, depending where we are. We're always going as fast as we can. It's There's never a moment where we're not just go, 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 go. So when it comes to cybersecurity, when we're, when we look at that, we think, oh, I can be at home. To us, that's like the dream is to be home, be with our families. Because in all honesty, if we're over the road, we're not going to see our family for about a month, maybe two or three, just depending on the dispatcher or, or the company. If it's something like when you're home daily, same thing. You might be, you might be gone for 14 hours at a day, not including the ride to and from work. So some of us might be out. 14 and a half, 16, 17, 18 hours, just depending on how far we are from work. So the idea of being home or being within a half an hour doing a nine to five, making roughly the same amount of money uh, we mm -hmm. are now, if not more, is just, it's a dream. Yeah, so that, I mean, so that's uh, uh, unbelievable. So 18 hour days, so. That's over know, exaggerating there, mind you. Oh, okay, so, but even 12 hour days, right? Which would be 50% less than the 18 hour day. A 12 hour day is still no joke if you're including waking up, getting ready, doing all of the work, then coming home, decompressing. I can definitely understand why you would be interested in that, but it really does bring up an interesting question. So with all of your time being spent doing these long work days, mm -hmm. What type of challenges have you encountered with like actually studying and doing labs? Because to work in cybersecurity, you do have to have the knowledge and the theory. But right now, practical skills are kind of reigning supreme over higher education. Mm -hmm. uh, so getting that lab time is, is critically important. So what kind of challenges are you encountering and how are you solving for those challenges? To clarify, I did mean 14 hour days. That is how long our days are maximum by hours of service rules. But for lab works and being able to do that stuff, what I'm doing is I'm waking up about two, three hours before my shift every day. If I can, I get lucky. I have a, a home daily job where I'm only running maximum 11, 12 hours out of the day. So I'll wake up maybe an hour too early and just study, either studying theory or I'll do a lab or on my days off, I'm, I'm working four to eight hours just studying on this because I, I really want to get into this. As far as uh, the tractor trailer goes, though, I mean, I know some of those tractors are incredibly bushy, right? With like an apartment in the back and stuff mm -hmm. like you have wireless internet in your cab. I mean, while you're at a way station or something, can you knock out a hack the box lab or something like that? Are you co-mingling? And, and if not you, remember, we're trying to talk to a broader audience. So, I mean, is that an opportunity for these truck drivers to be able to kind of maximize their time? So one of the things when you're in a backhaul and you, if you have internet, right? If you have something you can use in a cell phone device, you can use to have something where you can tap into it to a laptop. You can jump in, I don't know, 
uh, sites like TryHackMe or even run your own labs on your own machine and get some knowledge there. Because when you're at a backhaul, you're there either a drop and hook for 30 minutes or you're sitting for about four hours. Now you can either sleep that time, which we all need it, or you can study a little bit extra. That's interesting. So I do want to talk about lessons learned in a second, so I don't want to spoil this too much. But to stay on topic, have you found at these backhauls that doing lab work and really immersing yourself is better or reading is better or studying? And I know it's individual based, but there might be something that's more accommodating for these backhaul situations. What have you found? So far, what I found, honestly, is one actually finding your videos. It's one of them that I listen to, Outpost Jacks. It, various different creators on YouTube at least give you some sort of background to figure out what you want to do. One of the things I found is that the, the best thing for me is that I have to find a path. My time is very limited. So I need to find that preset path that someone can give to me where I can actually just go down that and know I'm doing the right thing. So Paul Cummings, the founder of Whole Cyber Human Initiative is something that I've started to go down his path. And I find that everything that he's asking me or asking me to do there is almost everything that I was told would be the way to go. Yeah. And I've gone ahead and brought up the whole cyber human initiative. I just, as a shout out, I'm on the board of advisors <laughs> for them and Simply Cyber is a proud partner, as you can see right there on the main right. page. But I'm very familiar with what they're doing. And I'll drop a link in the description below for people who are watching the video to find this uh, information. But please, please continue, Aaron. A lot of truck drivers are actually former military or veterans. So mm -hmm. all those people that help out at uh, Whole Cyber Human actually look for veterans to work with. So. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's an interesting angle. So, you know, if there are so many veterans, are there certain veteran services that, you know, you've taken advantage of or that you know about that have been advantageous? There have been a lot of people that I've spoken to that are veterans in, in trucking and every single one of them wish they could be home spending time with family because that's what it's all about when it comes to us. The reason why we get into trucking is to make enough money to support the family, but unfortunately, we lose the time with our family. Yeah, so. it's kind of a catch-22 there. Like, <laughs> right. it's tough. What lessons learned can you share with us? You know, you've been driving for a while. Obviously, you've made the decision to want to commit to cybersecurity and you've started working towards that, whether it's labs theory, I, network engagement. I know you're always there for Simply Cyber Community. What have you found, if you would tell someone who's like, hey, I drive trucks and like, I saw this interview, I definitely want to get into cyber. What's the first thing? Or, or what's something that I should avoid? Um, the first thing that I would recommend, watch your stuff in the morning, watch Gerald Auger's uh, daily cyber news briefing in the morning. Nice. It does help out no matter where you are. It does help out because it gives you the almost like a baseline of what to expect and you get in with your explanations. It's helped me out so much where I'm looking at other things like how to build a home lab and you already have a video over that or have you already spoken about that neck gear thing that happened last week where home yeah. businesses or people from home were getting issues. A lot of things that we do as truck drivers is we have to time manage everything. We have to pay attention to detail. We have to do 170 point inspection, sometimes more depending where we are at every day, when we start the day, when we end that day. Um, convert that to studying for cyber because there is so much to absorb when it comes to cybersecurity. The one thing I have noticed is that the more detail you take in early on, the easier it is to translate and pivot that to greater success later on. So you're not running back. What did I learn over here? And with that time management, when you're trucking, it is hard. So take the time out of your day, maybe an hour or two, and just keep up with it every day, even on days off. Your family will understand if you tell them the end goal is you want to be home with them. Yeah, I'd agree 100% with that. And just like you're touching on something that I tell people all the time. It is a hidden truth about working in cybersecurity. It is constant. If you're not ready for that, or if you don't like that, it might not be a field for you, but it, it is about vigilance. It is about consistency. It is about staying up to date because things change so rapidly within the industry that, and, and that's why I do the daily threat briefing every morning. I do it for myself as much as I do it for the community. And thanks for uh, sharing that you found value in that morning threat briefing. Uh, I really appreciate that. I'll, I'll drop a link also below uh, so people who are watching this can get to that. So one thing you just mentioned with this 170 point and having high attention to detail, it brings up the question, have you found 
any particular cybersecurity role yet that kind of aligns with truck driving experience and background? I will say having that attention to detail works out everywhere. When it comes to blue teaming in GRC, I would imagine it would have a great benefit because from what I find blue teaming, you're always watching logs and looking at logs. So mm -hmm. if you find one thing that's off, especially with that whole, like you said the other morning, the R and then the N being set oh, up. Yeah, the tempo M squatting? Yes, yes. Something like that, that's something that we have to pay attention to because that could be the difference of R, N, or let's say you, you're you looking at an airline and you find that that airline may have a little kink in it and you don't notice it until it's blown up apart and you're on the side of the road waiting for a yeah. certain to come fix you. Yeah, and I, I would say if, if you are watching this and you do identify with that great attention to detail and it's something you have, a couple other things that pop right out to me too is audit, which is in a GRC function because audit is all about meticulous detail and executing against a, a checklist effectively. And the other one, uh, this is kind of a sleepy one, is uh, bug bounty. Because with bug bounty, you typically get massive amounts of data do, during your recon, and then you have to meticulously go through and start eliminating things that don't have value, things that aren't going to result in discovered vulnerabilities and stuff like that. So definitely a couple options for folks there to check out. Now, Aaron, I, I, I'm curious, uh, and this, this could be nothing at all, but is there any communities that exist around the truck driving industry and, and individuals who drive trucks that are looking to get into cybersecurity. I know that's pretty niche, but surprisingly, a lot of people who drive trucks reach out to me about wanting to get into cyber. So I'm not sure if there's like a truck driver cybersecurity official Discord server or anything like that you may have heard of. I'm actually, I'm still looking for them. I find the best thing I've done is just put out, hey, I'm a truck driver. I would like to get into this. Can someone help? And I've done that with your with your community. Knowledge sharing, Black Hills, Anti-Siphon is another one. Same thing with Vicious Vineyards, which I believe that's whole cyber human server. The more you get out there, the more you say, hey, I'm a truck driver, I need help. This is actually one of the only communities that I've been a part of and been a lot part of a lot of them. If people know what EVE Online is, I did that for about a decade. So I know good communities and bad communities. They'll volunteer their help. When you're adding them in LinkedIn, or you're just talking to them on Discord, I have had, oh my God, so many people have reached out to me. Hey, what are you doing? How can I help? What's going on? And when it comes to your community in particular, I have had the most help. In. You just have to put yourself out there. Uh, best thing to do is put yourself out there, tell them what's going on, tell them where you're at. And I've had other PhDs such as yourself reach out to me and say, hey, I saw you're having issues with that. And they'll actually give an explanation. I wish I could say it in a particular community, but I find that the whole community as a whole, cybersecurity is more helpful than any other experience I've had in any other gaming community or trucking community. Maybe there's an opportunity for you there once you bust in. Mm -hmm. uh, to you know, pay it back or pay it forward, and, and create the the truck driving cybersecurity Discord server and lead that charge. Uh, certainly, I would I would help in any capacity I can from a simply cyber position. Aaron, any any final thoughts or um, you know ways for people to connect with you if they are truck drivers and they have some questions for you or they want to share some resources with you? They can connect to me on LinkedIn. The name I have, uh, Aaron Katzgager. You can add me on there. I have no problem helping you out, getting you started, putting in the right direction, giving you a Discord service to join. Hope you don't mind if I use yours. Oh, absolutely. That's what it's for. Uh, as well as, you know, other little niches that I find where they'll go out of their, their way to help you. I'm on LinkedIn. You can find me on Discord. I think it's Aaron KG now on Discord. Yep. Aaron KG. It's, it's Aaron at, KG. Yeah. And I'll provide links to your LinkedIn mm -hmm. profile in the description below so people can just click on and get right to you. No problem. If I don't know something, I won't tell you, Will. I'll forward you to an expert. <laughs> Awesome. And there are many of them here. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Aaron, so much. I know uh, this is definitely going to help people. Uh, again, it's a niche. It's a niche thing, but I'm telling you, there is a groundswell of tractor trailer drivers who are very interested in moving to cybersecurity. I hope uh, whoever's watching this uh, got value out of it and definitely take what Aaron has shared with us today and absolutely just run with it. Thank you so much for being with us, Aaron. Thank you so much. Absolutely.